All right, all right, all right. It is Saturday set time and the best horses in the world and Australia are converging on Randwick and that means that here at the Den we need to go up a level. So I've sought the best and the brightest from the Den and brought them all in to get you ready for the championships tomorrow. King Zone, welcome. How are you, mate? Thanks. Good. I'm in a punting war at the moment. This yep. is grand final week. And what am I doing? I'm off to the pub. That's <laughs> very true. <laughs> pub very on true. Saturday. But I hey, can't we, wait. we've had a great record at that in the past. We have. Um, I the really pressure comes off. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Relaxed I, atmosphere. I really we believe in it. you this week. Yeah, so um, looking forward to betting with you. Thank Dan you. O, thanks for coming in, mate. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm great, mate. Yeah, looking great forward to having you here. involved. We've got some fun things to do with you Yep. Um, today. Dream awesome. Team. G'day. Good to be back. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, for those people who are worrying where the fizzer is, he is here. He's in his hostage <laughs> chair and we will wheel him out when we're ready. But don't worry, he will be here. <laughs> hey, boys, let's talk about the wet weather. Um yeah, like in pre-production, Dan, you were saying there's a chance they might not even run. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance. We have, you know, I think there was one year that they postponed it till the Monday or something. I can't remember what year it was, but there's like 50 mils Thursday, 100 for, or up to 100 Friday, and then maybe up to 50 on Saturday. So if, especially Thursday, Friday, at the upper end of that range, it's going to be... Yeah, some question Touch about the meeting go. going ahead, yeah. Yeah, and I did ask for some questions and structure to the show and comments from you guys out there and you guys gave us some really good stuff and there was obviously a lot of talk about the effect of the rain. Mm-hmm. Dream Team, how much will the rain affect your approach on Saturday? Uh, yeah, quite a lot. Yep, yeah. you're looking for sort of smaller horses with like faster sort of legs. That's <laughs> sort of uh, the go. So I'm, I've, I've changed some of my plays in the big races based on that. Yeah. But, um, Completely different. You want, yeah, race fitness, free striding little horses. That's mm-hmm. my go. And do we think there's going to be some lanes at Randwick on Saturday? Very possibly, yeah. I mean, I had a look back at heavy tracks and um, my data was coming back that the inside was better, barriers one and two, and on pace. Yours was a bit conflicting, Dan, when you looked yeah, at that? Yeah, so I, as part of my prep for each meeting, I look at sort of similar meetings. So in this case, we're looking sort of heavy rail true. Um, normally I expect they'll be sort of getting, you know, at least three horses off the fence around the turn and sort of well off the fence, like lanes five plus in the straight, maybe wider. Um, but it's definitely not a case of the wider, the better. Like last year, this meeting was also heavy track, Doncaster. We saw Mr. Brightside, which was late in the day. He was sort of off the fence, but closer to the inside of the sort of pack. And, yeah. and he sort of made his run through there to win. Um, and I think it was my Obron at Big Odds sort of came up his inside and sort of challenged. So... Um, yeah, so it's not – I don't think it'll be an outside fence sort of day, but, but yeah, I do expect that after the first maybe two races, they'll be getting off the fence. Um, and hard day to lead, I think, um, but sort of that, you know, just off speed to, to sort of a little bit back in the field is probably a good zone. Cool. All right. As I said, we're going to go through all the races at Randwick. There's a few races that just didn't come up with any betting propositions for us, so we will move through those when they come up. But let's start with Randwick Race 1, the Kindergarten Stakes, Kings. 1,100-metre race. Start the start. Espionage was unlucky not to get run in the slipper, but he is in and up for redemption on Saturday. He is, and he's trialled since he, he won his trial as well, and I'm tipping him. I like him a lot. He's one of my best, best bets on the day. Just getting back to the bias, it's really important to – we can talk about it as much as we want, but it's really important to look at those first – couple of races Mm -hmm. and then make your mind up after that rather than thinking what's going to happen and sticking with that often but back to race one yeah I'm all over espionage um just looks the class horse in the race to me the other pick in the race uh Rosalind Starr won at the Kenzo in a very small field led the whole way I'm a bit skeptical over that sort of form Mm -hmm. so espionage I think has got a lot of talent I said on this show before I think that espionage will win a group one Mm. Let's start with the group threes at the kindergarten. Yeah. Yep. Start yep. there. What do you think, boys? Yeah, I mean, a couple of interesting sort of rides from Nash from Wide Barriers and, and all sorts of things. And Tommy goes on tomorrow, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with it as well. It's been pretty unlucky. We've, it's the horse that's dominated the Saturday sessions. We've mm-hmm. always been moaning and groaning about it. So <laughs> no problems, espionage for me. It is short at 225, but maybe you'll get better. Dano? Yeah, similar. I mean, I'll end up with it on top. I haven't gone right through the race yet, but yeah, it, it does, on what we've seen so far, sort of have a talent, have a talent edge and hasn't had every chance to sort of show its full potential yet. So hopefully it gets that on Saturday. Very good. We're going to skip past race two. Didn't really interest any of us. We're going to go to race three, King's Own, the Carbine Club Stakes. 
a 1,600-metre race for the three-year-olds. Yeah, I won't go into too much. I'll just tell you what I'm backing. So I'm going to definitely have something on Cafe Millennium, number one. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the six Kintai, those were my two bigger bets. And then a smaller bet on uh, number three, Ducasse. Okay, anything to add, boys? Not here. No? No, not here. I think Cafe Millennium would be a lot better suited at Randwick than he was at Rose Hill. So, okay, yeah. fair enough. We're going to roll through Randwick Race 4 and we're going to start getting into the pointy end of the day. Mm. The Country Championships final, a 1,400 metre race at Randwick Race, four, race 5. Mm. Bandy's boy. Yeah, Bandy's boy for me. Um, let's talk about what you told me, Matt, pre prior to coming in here. That's yeah. Take it away, something about a vet check? Yeah, so basically they do um, some vetting on all the horses in the country championships and uh, it's uh, – yeah, Bandy's boy didn't pass the first round of uh, vet checks and they've mm. got to go over him uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, there was some news coming from the stable. They were happy. It was just an abscess post its last run. Um, so, yeah, it'll go through a vet check. It does have barrier one. And by race five, it'll be uh, – we'll know a little bit more about the track. Pretty mm. short price favourite for mm. a country championship final, isn't it, Dano? Yeah, I mean, he's looked pretty good, especially what he did last start. I, I don't have a firm opinion on the race yet. So, yeah, I'll probably – yeah, I'm, I'm with course. him. I yeah. thought seven day back up, loves Randwick, barrier one uh, on the heavy tracks, barriers one and two are profitable, so I'm not worried about that. Maybe they do get out to lane three, but still I don't think you can circle, so I'm not worried about that. I'm with him, but what Matt is saying obviously is a concern. Very good. Well, let's move to the first of the group ones, the size produce stakes, 1,400 metres, group one, race six, and as you can see up on the screen here, we've got the AI as a bit of a foundation, and just quickly you can see they've got the – win $10,000 cash on Saturday at our punt party. We're giving away 10,000 cash to a Wolf Den member. So if you want to be in the draw, you've got to become a Wolf Den member. Go do that. Getting back to the race, King Zone. It's a great mm. race. What are you thinking? Well, if you gave me 10,000, I'd put 5,000 on Storm Boy <laughs> and I'd put 5,000 on Manal. Ooh. Manal's run in the slipper was sensational, along with Traffic Warden, actually. The other two best runs, I thought, out of the slipper. Mm -hmm. uh, Storm Boy, I think, will ease, ease out in the market but gets all the on-pace favours. We know how good he is. But Manal is, is my play in the race. I think Lady of Camelot, I wasn't that keen. Uh, bullet rating of 73 there. I just thought it was a bit unders at $4 and will ease as well. What do you think, boys? Yeah, I like Storm Boy in the race. I mean, I thought, uh, obviously went under in the Golden Slipper. I still thought it was a very, very good run. I mean, everyone saw he was a bit slowly away, but the key for me was that he was put under heavy pressure after that to chase. Mm -hmm. Once he found his position, he, he sort of stopped riding for about 100 metres and by then they are at the 800 and he had to go again. So the horse never, ever got a chance to relax into any sort of natural rhythm. Um, for him to run as well as he did, um, in that scenario, I think was was the sign of a really good run. Um, still rated strongly. I think up to fourteen hundred, he's going to get a chance to to find a spot. I think he just lobs outside the lead. Stable mate, uh, probably a node leads from the inside. Um, and I think you know he's got a huge engine. This horse, so I think at fourteen hundred in a race that might be uh, a little bit grueling in the conditions. So I'm sort of pretty keen that he'll come out on top. Do you think Coolmore are at all worried about their investment in him? They've obviously put a huge amount of money into him. What do you think they think no, after this? I think they've got that much money that they don't worry about any individual horse, to be honest. But but obviously um, not winning the slipper would have been a natural sort of downer. They, they were sort of banking on that and so was everybody that was in line to get a kicker if he did Including Gay and Adrian who yeah, won the slipper. Gay and Adrian. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he's still got plenty of opportunities to, to win, his, win his group one. Um, this race, the Champagne, and, and then also in the, in the spring races like the Golden Rose and Caulfield Guineas and so on. Yeah. Oh. I watched the replay of the slip. I've never seen a trainer look so downhearted <laughs> after he won that Adrian Bott did. I, I watched it last days, night. Yeah. He's like, yeah. right. you didn't know what to do. Yeah. Reminded me of Weary. Remember some of those footage back yeah. in the yes. day? Yes. Yeah, 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 <laughs> the yeah. wrong one. Wrong, wrong one, one. <laughs> but, um, for me, I mean, Storm Boy, his strength, from what I've heard that people say, he's the biggest and strongest in the yard. I actually think that's going to go you against him like on that, Saturday. Yeah. So for me. Is it a wet track? Yeah. For me, Manal, uh, every run he's been with a bit of sting out. I don't think he's been as impressive, Storm Boy. So I'll go with uh, Kings, Manal. Uh, great run last start. Looks a smaller sort of horse. Uh, Collett went to the fence as he does. Barrier 10 probably is suitable. It actually jumped really well last start, Manal, mm. if you watch the overhead. Mm. Um, and got way back further than it should have. Smaller field, 750 Manal. If you can make ground down the middle, I'm going to have a big, big crack at Manal. Ooh, Which you will. Be that. That's actually a good tip, Matt, give about watching the starting horses that jump well. You often see horses that 
the form guide might say they mm. settled back, but when you watch the start, they're actually jumping in the first five strides. I love they're the overhead. On yeah. terms yeah. with with the other horses, and often you find those horses they might draw a better next start. I think it can... literally jumped second or third if you yeah. open the bar if once the barrier is open. So yeah, I love that overhead footage. You only get it during carnival. Yeah, time. I, I wish we had it all the time. Mm, um, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's a big positive angle to find horses that are going to settle closer, and that's one of the the key ways to find them is looking for horses that jump well from outside gates, but are then sort of snicked back. Yeah. Do you think PVL might get the helicopter out again on top of the track to try and dry it out? Absolutely, <laughs> probably going to need it. Yeah, <laughs> I think he'll build. He might build, build a roof next time. <laughs> <laughs> First indoor race course. It's time to bring the fizzer in. Okay, the fizzer. Fizz. Fizzer. Anything to add to the size produce stakes? Size produce. I'm. I'm a little bit like Matt. I thought Stormboy, bigger horse, going to struggle in the wet. Was my opinion a little bit. I found Lady of Camelot again, which I found in the slipper. Um, I think it gets a perfect run behind the speed. The node might be off and gone. Um, for, for those people on the quick backup. Um, I mean, there's big runs out of, uh, out of the slipper, which a lot of people have talked about. Prost, Coleman and Manal, um, even Traffic Warden. But they're all got to come from behind. And, and from what I remember of Ramwick when it's wet, I'm pretty sure you've still got to be on speed. Mm. Mm. So it'll be really interesting to see if they can run these, these good horses down, which sometimes is really hard to do. Very good. So, we're going to move to the TJ Smith Stakes, 1,200 metre race, Group 1. First question for you, Dano, is it the best race in the country? Someone on Twitter asked me to ask you that question. Yeah, it is in a rating sense. I mean, it rates, if we look at the last five years' winners, it's sort of a length better than the next best race, which is the Everest, um, has been the Everest. And then we've got that champion sprint on um, the Flemington Carnival, um, which has dragged down a little bit. Rock, Rock and Horse won one year in a sort of very low rating. Um, but outside of that, it's had a lot of – good winners as well. But, yeah, mm. TJ is definitely the, the best race, sprint race on the calendar every year. Yeah, I want to stick with you. So when the new market handicap came around for a bit of fun, I said let's put Black Caviar mm. in the new market. People really loved it. So we're going again and I've asked you to put Black Caviar in the TJ Smith stakes on Saturday. Yeah. What did you come up with? What price will you offer me? Oh, will I offer you? <laughs> <laughs> Would you offer the Look, general I, public? I'd say she'd start around $1.15. Wow. Um, it's it's interesting that in her last 14 start, she SP'd between I think $1.04 and $1.14 or $1.15. Um, she never started longer than that. Um, in a couple of those races, especially the TJ Smith in 2011 where she was $1.15, she was chasing like a prime hay list who mm. for a couple of strides there we all thought might, might stretch her. Um, she was just way too good in the end. There's no hay list in this race. I mean, mm. even for the quality of – we talk about Imperatrice and I wish I win and, and some of the others, like hay list would have all of those covered. So um, on that basis, I find it hard to think she'd start longer than $1.15. Um, perhaps the, the the sort of extra variable there is is the wet track. She never actually raced on, on a slow or worse. She was always running on good and or dead four tracks um, which we now call good for mm -hmm. um so yeah that might have been sort of an extra factor but yeah look the sprinters running around in in this race are, are no better than opposition she was beating up on consistently and in the case of Haley's, they're probably a little bit bit, bit off him yeah Fizzer, before we get into the race quick question for you from another viewer mm. i wish i win the tactics with i wish i win from moody what do you make of them first up into a really hot sprint race possibly a wet track what do you think about that? Oh, I don't know if they could have predicted the the heavy track, which they do happen at this time of year. But for me, negative. Um, it's going to get right back in the field and I can't see it being anywhere near the 440 that it is now. I think it will drift heavily. What did you make of the race? Anything else to add? I just think oh, – look, I've found Imperatriz. I'm, I'm more than happy to be on her. She's shown versatility with being able to lead, being able to get back and sprint over the top. She likes the wet. She's beaten um, the horse you just talked about in the wet in New Zealand early on in their career. Yeah. Um, for me, it sets up pretty perfectly for what Kings was saying, the best sprinter in Australia not long ago. So mm -hmm. I think that she can prove that she's she's up there. And um, I thought of that race, other than that, um, I thought Espiona gets back, probably goes better in Melbourne. Sunshine in Paris, probably the other horse that I thought was – has a good upside, not a bad horse. And um, I just thought I wish I win was probably the one that's going to get right out in the market. Very good. Kings, what did you make of it? Um, yeah, just on I wish I win, there's obviously reasons why this year's first up sort of thing. And I don't know what they are, but you can't sort of – Moody knows what he's doing with sure. these horses. So, yeah, we don't know the backstory really, so it's hard to sort of say 
what's going on. My girl in Peritrees, I'm not backing on Saturday. I don't dislike her, but she's just not going as good as she was in the spring. Mm -hmm. All her three figures have been worse than her worst figure in the spring. So she will need to improve. I don't know how much Randwick will suit her compared to a track like the Valley. Mm. Um, so what does that leave me? It leaves me with a couple of roughies. Uh, definitely Espiona, mm -hmm. third up and racing well. Uh, from a pure value perspective, Buenas Noches as well. Um, they'll get back. They'll be running on. It's about $17 and about $34. So I'm with a couple of roughies for once. Very good. Dano, anything to add? Um, with I wish I win, I mean, we don't know, right? So in a scenario like this, it's hard to imagine how does the market underestimate him? Like what's the angle you're taking mm. to say that, oh, he's a much better chance than the price they're offering? And he, so, won, he won the race last year, of course, at a good Yeah, price. he won it last year. He was like fourth up or third up or something off yeah. a good platform. Um, but... Yeah, I would say to people if they like Imperatrice, she has a heavy 10 win early in her career on New Zealand, which was like a six length win in Group 2 weight for age company, was clearly the best rating earlier in her career. Um, so, And that heavy 10 track on the day, the sort of variant in a speed sense, was heavier than most heavy tracks we get in Australia. So if you do like her, I think that um, you know she can swim through the ground or she has shown that before. Um, I was sort of leaning, if, if you want to have a bet, sort of maybe each way, a couple of roughies. Um, Bella Nipatina, who gets back to a heavy track. Uh, last time we saw her on a heavy, she bolted in um, Group 1 there at Mooney Valley, ran by far her career best rating. Uh, and a real roughie, I think, it's 20s or longer, Chain of Lightning, stable mate to I Wish I Win. Mm -hmm. um, she found form last start with a solid ratings, probably a length and a half or two lengths off this race, but I think she's a much better wet tracker uh, if you look back in her form. And if she takes that rating and improves because she's getting back to the wet, she could run to a level that sort of at least puts her in the placing. So she might be one at, at massive odds. Yeah. It's a great addition of the race, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a great race every year. We don't have highlight horses like Nature Strip or Eduardo. Certainly Imperatrice coming up sort of, yeah, adds a, adds a headline horse for the race. Um, and, yeah, it'll be a great race as it is every year. Yeah. Um, mate, I'm going to stay with you. So I'm going to move to the Doncaster Mile, 1,600 yeah. metres, obviously. Group 1, a fantastic addition of the race. Seems a really, mm. really deep field. What would happen if we threw Winks in the Doncaster this year? Yeah, that's a great question because it's a handicap, right? So if we're talking weight for age, it'd be almost no betting, but under handicap conditions. She won in 2016 with 56 and a half. That was the autumn after her first Cox Plate win. So she was already a star, but she hadn't really sort of, you know, really gone to her absolute heights. Um, she started a dollar eighty that day, which is the equal shortest price winner in history of mm -hmm. the Doncaster. Um, the weight carrying record, I think, is 59 for a mare, which was back in the 30s. Sunline won with 58. So if we gave Winks 59 or let's say we gave her 60 and I looked at her sort of general level of good ratings, not her absolute career best, but just her, you know, sort of general level of good ratings, I think she'd sort of SP around 250, 270 in this Doncaster. Wow. Yeah. Um, 10,000. 10, <laughs> <laughs> um because, yeah, as I said, 60, you know, it's like three kilos above weight for age. She's giving away massive amount of weights to some, you know, decent horses, obviously yeah. not in her class, but that's the nature of races like the Doncaster and, and those big handicaps. So, um, as I said, 56 and a half, she won at $1.80. Um, give her, a, you know, a little bit of extra weight. It's a decent Doncaster this year, yeah. so it, it's no gimme. Um, and, yeah, in a rating sense, if you price her up, that's sort of where she'd land, I think, yeah. I'm going to stay with you again. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's just go a bit when we get That's out. That's okay, no problem. Thank you, buddy. Um, we, nah. we, he's, like, it'll only be like a few It'll be right, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what we, oh, yeah. Um, there was a question from a viewer about militarised that yep. he's probably copped a bit of a whack from the handicap as you're sort of <laughs> in tight with the militarised ownership group. Yep. What do you think? Um, I'd love him to have a couple of kilos less, of course. But look, when you look back in history, he's probably – his weight, 54, I think he has. He's, he's relatively consistent with other three-year-olds of his profile. Um, we have seen some Group 1 winners get in with 49 or 50, but the important thing to note there is that the weights are released earlier. So horses like Lindemann last year um, or the Randwick Guineas winner um, that – Michael Friedman had, they ended up with 49 or 50, but they won their group ones after the weights were already declared and, mm -hmm. and they're not sort of re-handicapped. Um, so Militarise won the size, he won the champagne, and then he came out in the spring and won the Golden Rose. So 54 is pretty fair there, I think. Um, when you look back in history, there's been, I think, five three-year-olds carry 54 or more, and three of them have run places. Um, Mentality 
at 55. I think he'd only won one Group 1. Piero had 57, which was amazing. He won the Triple Crown, obviously. And Hubert Gotchu had really only won the Caulfield Guineas and a couple of um, couple of Group 2s. And I think he had 54 and a half and ran second. So it's not, um, it's not an unrealistic weight given the horse's profile. Um, but... Yeah, he probably still needs to find a little bit to, to win on mm. those, yeah, on, with that weight. Do you have a tip in the race? Um, Don Carson, I mean, there's plenty of plenty of um, potential winners. Another Will can obviously win. Celestial Legend can obviously win. I don't think either of those horses are value at the moment. Um, probably the, the value in terms of that odds, I'd say, is Detonator Jack. I think he's a great value long shot. Um, and also throwing Democracy Manifest there, I think he's he's some sort of chance at massive odds um, mm -hmm. to, to run a good race, even though he'll get a long way back in the field. Um, so they'd probably be my, my yeah, two long shot picks, um, both like the wet and both sort of got ratings that can figure. Very good. King Zone, there was a question yeah, huh? about another will. Will they go handlebars down from the white barrier and just try to get well out in front with another On another will? will? No, nah, mm. they'll kill him if they do that. Okay. There's a bit of pace in this race, um, mm. attractable. There's about four horses that go forward. Are no, you happy that with won't. the quality of the field. You're a bit of a Doncaster aficionado. I think the field's come oh, up magnificent. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Um, no, it's a great field. It's a great field. I like another will, but I'm really worried about barrier 21. I've got to be honest with you. When I looked at those wide barriers, there's going to be a lot more pressure that he's ever experienced as well. So I don't really like the race. Mm -hmm. I love the race, but I don't really, from a betting perspective, I don't really yep. like it. I'm definitely going to be on um, one of Dan's tips, Democracy Manifest. Loved his last start win. I want to see how – the only two also I could back are it and uh, definitely backing it and another will. But I just want to see how the track's playing with another will. So great race but not getting too heavily involved. Fizzer, before we let you go, mate, what did you make of the race? Uh, yeah, great, great addition of the race. Looks looks really, really tough like the boys have said. Um, I've got Lindemann on top. Um, it's a Waller horse, 2,000 back to 1,600. Dan tipped at his best bet a few weeks ago. Yeah. Mm. Um, only concern is the heavy track, and if it's bottomless, I'm not sure whether or not it'll get through it well enough. Um, Lady Laguna keeps producing, great horse, gets the right run, and I don't know how good Southport Tycoon is, but there's another little roughie to throw in your numbers as well. Um, just just tough. I, I just think, like King said, the favourite, probably a bit short, being out of the Doncaster Prelude and drawn barrier 21. I don't know where it's going to get to. So um, it could be a good roughies race. Yeah. Bird tipped me Southport Tycoon this yep. morning. Good yeah. chance. A bird. Bit of mail for you. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Good chance. I was initially looking to find it when it won the Australian Guineas. That race rated really well for me, and knowing he had 49 on you on a, in a rating sense, he comes up really well in the race. Um, it's just a question of that sort of barrier. He doesn't have a huge amount of early speed, so he's going to be sort of back and probably really wide, um, whether that's the right type of run. Um, to, to sort of win. But I think they're yeah. going to go 100 miles an hour. Yeah, on talent, he's definitely there. Um, wouldn't talk anyone out of backing him, that's for sure. Mm. Fizzer, can you give us your A-set, please? Yeah, no worries. Just um, I got beaten on all the faves last week. So there's no faves in the Saturday set this week for me. <laughs> just winners. Um, just winners, hopefully, <laughs> and all $6-ish, I think. Um, Ascot race six, number six, a horse called Golden Kathleen's had one start. Super impressive. Think it can continue on with it and uh, win this time in. Um, I'm going to Eagle Farm, which could be heavy as well, but I've picked a few horses I think will go in the wet. Race nine, number 14, Ella to Armour. Won really well at Ipswich last start. Comes back a little bit in distance, which won't be a concern. Inside barrier, a little concern. But they seem to be drifting to the centre of the track at Eagle Farm anyway, and it, and it goes really good in the heavy. Um, and then I'm going to race 10, number 15, Tajaki. Great first up, run over 1,200. Sticks to the 1,200. Looks like it'll be fitter. Had no luck in the straight. I think it's a good chance around the $6. On you, mate. You're free for another week. You can go and bet. Yes, no more imprisonment. <laughs> in you come, Dream Team. Baton change. All right, it's time to move to the derby. And as you can see Ooh. up on the screen, we've got AI to put a bit of structure to it. I can see the words golden bullet, so that's exciting. You can also see there that AI is free this Saturday for all members. So every single meeting will be free this Saturday at our punt party and also members anywhere around Australia or the world. So, um, yeah. Great weekend to become a member of AI. Back to the race, King Zone. Mm, the what Riff. Make of it? The Riff. The I riff. love the Riff. It's my favourite horse at the moment, the Riff. Mm -hmm. 48 points clear uh, on the bullet ratings. A golden bullet. Won the Victorian Derby. Sat wide last start. Consistently the best ratings. So I saw $3.60 earlier yesterday, but I didn't take it. I wish I could have. 
But I think it's around the 320 mark at the moment, $3. Seems like a good price to me. I'm all over the Riff. Dan, what do you say? Yeah, I like Riff Rocket in the race. I thought the win um, at Rose Hill was excellent, like back wide. They went slow. He was the one least suited by the speed. Uh, Nash kind of intimated after in his interview that the horse won sort of despite the trip and maybe his efforts type of thing. I mm-hmm. um, thought it was a very, very good win. Uh, people raised a lot of questions about his ability to stay and all that sort of stuff until they, you know, I don't think the fact that he only won the Victoria Derby narrowly means that he's not a real stayer. They were still finishing fast in that race. The race rated well. Um, and, you know, some people are, you know, big believers in stride lengths and things like that for stayers. Like he ran his last 200 fastest in the Rose Hill Guineas and actually won one stride less than, than the other horses. So mm-hmm. he does sort of seem like he has that you know, sort of action and, and profile of a stayer. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to, to gamble just on his quality um, and perhaps a, a general perception that he's not a not a stayer might sort of see a couple of roles more than maybe what we should get. Dream team. Yeah, I'm with the, the girls, the orchestral form. Ooh. So Zardozzi, uh, Ooh. just a seven-day backup, wet track, rock hard fit, super impressive in the Oaks, I think it was last year. Um and then you've also got, I think, Riff Rocket looks a big sort of gawky thing. And if it's a heavy 10, um, at around, I mean, I think they might level up. If, if a track's super wet, I think Zadozi could even challenge Riff Rocket for favoritism from what I'm gathering the whispers around the people saying. So, um, yeah, I'm Zardozzi. I know it's a stay out for Kings, but, um, yeah, I'll be backing her. Sweet. We're going to move to a round week race 10, which is the PJ Bell Stakes. 12 and a metre race for three-year-olds. And the A set is alive in this. Chris Camilleri is tipping learning to fly. And I will read out why he is tipping it. Uh, Annabelle Nisham trained Philly. That is set to peak now. Third up this preparation after two strong performances. Suited back to 1,200 metres. And from the good draw, will enjoy the run of the race, stalking the leading pair. Can you argue with Chris Camilleri there? I don't want to argue with Chris no. Camilleri at all because he's, he's been move. on fire. Mm. I'll be winning that much by race 10. I'm just going to – we're working the room at the pump party and I'm going to box the trifecta in the last because I think it's a real hard race. Great. Dano? Yeah, look, no opinion. Very hard race. Haven't gone right through it in detail yet, but on the on face value, it doesn't look the sort of race I normally bet in. And you'd be the last person to want to argue with Chris Camilleri as well, would you? Of course, he's going well. <laughs> he's our teammate in the uh, the A team. So that's we, right. We, we yeah. would yeah. argue with Chris, right. absolutely, hundred yeah, um, percent. Dream team, anything to add there? <clears throat> no, no. I mean, I think it's a good chance. I thought the twelve commemorative is racing well as well, but. I'll have to have another look at that now. The track's going to be wet. So it's that's... a huge horse commemorative, isn't it? Yeah. From memory? So from memory, big, big it may horse. not be suited, but we'll see. Yeah. Can we get that added to the form guide, like the size size of the horses? We do. They we weigh, have the weight. They weigh them the in uh, Hong Kong. You've got the weight. You've got the stride length data. You keeping that to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Release that. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by our good friends at Ladbrokes. Join Ladbrokes today and support the show by using the code GALLOP. Take on the fun during the championships with the Ladbrokes app. Load with the best racing features, including bet ticker so you can see where the big bets land, yard comments to give you the on-course insight straight from the parade ring, and black book so you can add your favourite runners and get notified before they race. So take on the fun and Ladbroke it during the championships. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. Very good. Our good friends at Ladbrokes have asked us to put together a quaddy for day one and day two of the championships and also all age stakes day. So that's for the next three weekends. And you can see up on the screen now, this is our quaddy play for this Saturday. We put a lot of work into it before the Saturday set started. We all sat on the couch out there and workshopped it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fitzy was the leader and Fitzy's very good at jagging a quaddy. I believe you're also going to be able to copy it straight from the Ladbrokes app. They'll put some sort of a promotion up in the app uh, maybe tomorrow or Saturday. So hopefully that gets done in time. If not, you just have to load the numbers in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. About about 240 combinations. 100 bucks gets you 42%. Fantastic. Sounds good. You sit back and watch it. Sit yeah. back and count your money. <laughs> Our good friends at racing.com have asked us to continue to publish the Saturday set on the website and app, and we really appreciate that. Let's have a bit of a talk about the Caulfield meeting. It's actually come up as a, a really nice meeting. Just before we do that, I want to have a talk with you in particular, Dano. So 
the All Star Mile, everyone knows that it needs a bit of reworking, mm. including Racing Victoria. They're, they're happily sort of out in the press saying that you know nothing's off the table. They're going to look at what they can do to try and reinvigorate it. The you know what they brought in sort of five or six years ago hasn't really worked. Mm. So I've got an idea, um, reasonably controversial. I want to talk it through. So a twenty million dollar slot race. You can see it up on the screen there. So as soon as you start talking twenty million dollar slot races, a lot of people who are a bit upset with how prize money is working at the moment go well you know that's crazy where all, where's all that prize money can come from why should punters have to pay for it well in my structure their punters aren't actually paying for it it's the same structure as we have at the moment so racing victoria put in the four million that they've mm. put in then we sell 12 one million dollar slots um, which i think you would be able to do we've just had the slot race in new zealand the kiwi get sold a, you know sold pretty easily for around the seven hundred thousand dollar mark mm. Then we try and get $4 million from a major sponsor, ambiguous as to whether that's feasible or not, but I think it would be. Um, and then it's a $10 million first prize, perpetually at Flemington, 1,600 metres, wait for age. The big thing here, which would probably a lot of people would scratch their head about, move the Australian Cup to Mooney Valley. The idea behind that is I think that Racing Victoria need to put some real structure to their autumn carnival and really try and pump it up. Um, and if you gave the All-Star Mile permanently to... The VRC, Mooney Valley Race Club might be like, well, how do we come out of this? I think that the mm. Melbourne Racing Club have got things pretty perfect with their Blue Diamond Carnival. Um, and I think if you threw Mooney Valley Racing Club a bone with the Australian Cup, I think it's also a bit of a prelude to the Weight for Age Championship of Australia in the spring with the Cox Plate. So it'd be over the, you know, obviously you can run, yeah. run it over 2,040 metres. I think you'd also shorten the carnival by a week. I think that it's a bit long at the moment. I think it goes for eight weeks, the Festival of Racing. I think you could pull mm. it back to seven weeks. And then the last thing is we're going to get the next generation of participants down in Victoria to drive this. For example, I was at Lindsay Park. I spoke to JD Hayes about it and he was like, sounds like a great concept. I'd, I'd love to get involved in pushing it. And that would be, you know, you get all these young stars coming through. You've got the, the Hayes boys, you've got the Freedmans, you've got so many young people who are going to mm, take this game mm, forward, mm. try and get them on board to promote it to their generation I do understand that AFL completely dominates down there and mm. the All-Star Mile this year was around the time of the start of the season. So I understand yep. that you've got to factor that in. But I don't see any reason why you can't get massive crowds to Flemington um, in time if it's promoted correctly like we get for the Everest in Sydney. Yeah. And they obviously have to do something. Um, the, the other thing is about the talent. I mean, this year we missed Fangirl, um, didn't go to the race Alligator Blood, who was out injured, which was a big blow. Um, a tissue was probably the other one who decided to go to the Australian Cup. Look, outside of those three, there wasn't a lot of other horses that would have ended up there, you know, mm. and you start talking about $20 million races and so on. Um, I think they need to decide, first of all, whether they want to stick with the all-star concept, um, whether it stays a wait for age race. Mm -hmm. At the moment, there's, there's no depth in it. There's a couple of chances and the rest are virtually no chance um, because... It is under weight for age conditions. I think um, if, if you own Mr. Brightside, you wanted to keep it weight for age. Hundred <laughs> percent. And and but if you go to handicap, you get a much more interesting yeah. race. You could effectively have like a Doncaster type scenario, which creates massive interest and talking among participants and players. But then you may not get the all stars that you're looking for. Uh, for Mr. Brightside, has fifty nine or other horses highly weighted might go somewhere else. So I think they need to to look at that concept um you know exactly where they want to pitch the race and, and what the brand of the race wants to be um moving the australian cup probably a lot of politics at play there but it'd be great cox plate of the autumn i mean why mm. not mooney valley 2004 i just think we've got to do something um, we've got to have a crack and yeah. I, I, another thing gil mclaughlin like if he came in he'd be looking for a challenge he's been obviously very successful as an administrator yeah drop this on gil mclaughlin go mate make this work yeah. it's a big challenge for yeah. him if he was into it he might be able yeah. to make it work. Yeah. Isn't Mooney Valley closing down for a period of time soon or yeah. something? Yeah, that's right. So you'd have to factor that where, in as well. Where would it go there? But yeah. yeah, I do believe the race needs to to end up at one one track. I think that's important for the brand instead of having – that's what we associate the great races with, all the great Flemington races, Ramwick races, the Caulfield features, things like that. So having it move is, is sort of a problem. And, yeah, I just think – there's a lot of good ideas out there. Probably none of them are absolutely perfect, but it comes back to what do they want the brand of the race to be? Do they want it to be an all-star concept and go all out for the best weight for age horses we can get? Um, or do they want to make a more open and intriguing and interesting race that has many more chances, creates a lot more betting interest and a lot more sort of chat across the industry about the potential winners and, and put massive prize money up for some handicappers and, and you know make some dreams come true that way? 
Yeah. Anything to add, boys? Help. Oh, I just want to bet. I just want to <laughs> bet. I'm just not interested in these. I just want to bet. But I want market stimulators. Well, my turnover is going down. I want it to be going up. So prize money isn't going to do that for me. I want I want the markets to be stimulated and but more, more, more money going in. That's right. To so, them, so what you've got to do is you've got to get this money. next generation. We want everyone to become a punter in a responsible mm. way. And I think we this do. kind of thing is the way to do that. Anyway, it's a good discussion point and we will move on. And you just want to bet. I if do. You just, if you just want to bet Let's and you want to do it to on it. course, you can go to Caulfield for free because our good friends at the Melbourne Racing Club, as usual, have got free tickets to Caulfield on Saturday. You can go into the description of this video, hit the link, get some tickets, head out there as usual. We appreciate the support from the Melbourne Racing Club. Let's talk about this card at um well, you Caulfield. know how much I love Caulfield. You do. And the races we're going to look at are races seven and eight. The first race is the Galilee Series Final, 2,400-metre mm -hmm. race for three-year-olds. It's a bit of a um, – the horses who quite weren't quite up to the ATC Derby level mm. get to go around here. And so it's actually a nice little race. It is. Uh, I'm with Apulia and Sunsets. Both, I think, will be a lot fitter for the last run um, to turn the tables on the favourite, which came over from New Zealand um, last time. Orchestral and form. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I just think, yeah, I just think this is a different race at Caulfield, and and, and they can swing the value at the moment. There isn't any there, but mm. I think they will drift in the market, and I'll be getting on late. Very good, boys. Anything to add? No, it's a tricky race. Like it was about twelve horses spread across the Mooney Valley track last start in the mm. uh, Antrim Coast race. Um, so yeah, very even field. I thought a roughy. Um, Pat Carey, he always trains a good stayer. There's one at um, 30s, maybe 40s or 50s on Saturday. It's number 10, Maputo. I'll have something on it. Okay, very good. Dano? Yeah, really tough race. I think the, the top three, the two Kings mentioned in Antrim Coast, are like a class above the others on their ratings. Um, Apulia and Sunsets have the better ratings from last spring over Antrim Coast. Um, it's an interesting one. Um, ran well behind Orchestra in a really fast run derby over 2,400. Was a little bit flattered in the 2000 last up because they went really fast in front and it was that sort of grinding finish. I don't think there's a huge amount of speed in that race on Saturday, so it's probably going to be back and the race may require a little bit far, more of a sprint home. Um, so that's my little query about it. Can definitely still win, um, but, but can't see any value. Um, Apulia, similar thing, going to get back, long way back in the field. Sunsets is the interesting one because it's the one that could press forward. We saw it do that in the spring race up on speed and give a horse like Riff Rocket sort of a big run. So if I was leaning to one horse, it would probably be Sunsets because I can't imagine the other two are going to go forward. Mm -hmm. And if they do go moderately in the middle stages, then Sunsets is going to be somewhere up near the lead, surrounded by a bunch of horses that are 20s, 30s, 50 to 1 with the two main dangers sort of many lengths behind it. Um, but, yeah, it's a really tough race because I think there's a query over – sort of all of those top three um, sunsets still yet to prove that it's going as well as it was last prep. Sweet. Let's move to a race eight, the Victoria Handicap, mm -hmm. 1,400 metre group three handicap. Another great race. Some good horses in this race. It is. Good horses. Good I'm horses. with uh, Here to Shock yeah. and C&E. Yep. Uh, I think they will both be very much better suited second up, fitter and ready to peak. Both great value, especially C&E, I think. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, tough race. You got Globe, the, the sort of boom horse from Price and Kent Stable, who went really well, um, and then sort of had it ran, ran poorly and had a setbacks come back. Had two thousand meter jumped out. Looks like it's gone enormous. Mm. Um, but you know, this is fourteen hundred. He finds Buffalo River drawn inside there. So I just wonder. His best was at eighteen hundred. This is going to be a, a solid fourteen. Just whether that speed is going to be in his sort of right rhythm. Um, but you know, can definitely sort of win. He, he doesn't have much room to move off his best ratings and, and there's plenty of others that can beat him like, um, you know, here to shock, even c &E on a form last prep. Um, Buffalo River's probably the safest one in terms of running well. He's been so consistent of late. He's going to be yeah. up on the lead. He loves no, Caulfield. Uh, no pride of Jenny to contend yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. And, and if you look at his last three runs, anywhere in the range of those last three from a rating sense sort of puts him in the finish or sort of winning. So he's probably your more reliable um, horse, but he's also four bucks, right? Whereas some of those other horses are sort of double the price or mm. or longer. Um, I think Heater Shock um, has sort of challenges on the map unless they go really hard and, and sort of string out. Um, and yeah, CNE definitely. I think she's unbeaten at 1,400, five from five. 
Um, and her last couple of ratings at 1400 sort of put her right in the mix. I think she's like $8 or something. And um, second up, very good. I can't yeah, remember the stats, yeah, yeah. but it was like four from five or three from four. So yeah. Four from three. So, yeah, mm. she profiles really well. And I think if I remember my map, she just looks like she works across and just lobs in a perfect spot, just sort of tracking tracking the speed. So, um, yeah, if I was to sort of pick two, I'd say Buffalo River is the safest bet to sort of run well. Um, but at a longer price, probably Sione. Um, albeit she does need to improve off first up, but does have the profile to do it. Yeah. Dream team. Uh, yeah. Sione Falmoina for me. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think you got to bet against Globe. The barrier trials is what's keeping it so short. I yep. think its ratings don't even match up to the other horses yet. So obviously plenty of respect for it, but, um, of course it's trialed so well. I think that's why it's so short or jumped out in Victoria. So yeah, I'm Sione. And maybe uh, Buffalo River, but it, it's got to be tired. Been chasing Jenny. That's last two starts or three starts. Short enough as well. Four yep. bucks. Yeah. Sione's the value for me. King's on your Saturday yeah. set, please. My official Saturday set is uh, we're starting off early. We're going espionage in Randwick Race 1. And I'm going to wait on the price. Don't dive in early because of this wet track. A lot of rain around. So I'm going to wait and bet on the day. The same with Riff Rocket. I'm going to wait not to charge into the 310 or 320. Mm -hmm. um, so those are my two official Saturday set tips at Randwick. And then I've got one more at Caulfield, race four, number six, Peace Treaty, which I would back early. I think 550 at the moment, with, which I think is a great price. Uh, over race last start at, uh, at Caulfield as well. Cost at the race, in my opinion, or any chance of winning the race. Um, maps really well here. Crosses from the wide barrier and he's going to be really hard to run down. So those are my three. I showed a small profit last week, but this week I need to show a big profit. Mm, you're just hanging in there. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Um, let's get the A set tips. And it's great to get in person. We've already got Chris Camilleri's tip earlier. It was learning to fly around with race 10. Boys, what did you come up with? I'll go Storm Boy in the size. One for the uh, big boys getting through the heavy, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been a huge fan of the horse. So I'll sort of die on my sword there one last time. Um, give him a chance. Oh, I think that. Um, I've always believed he's the sort of best two-year-old in the country, so we'll have one more crack to see if he can prove it. Very good. Dream mm -hmm. team. Yeah, I'll just stick with Zardozzi uh, in the derby. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. Head-to-head, head, Riff versus Zardozzi. That's right. If the bookies get a split, oh, we should give up. May the best man win. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Up on the screen now is RI's staking plan. And now we're going to move to our return on investment graphic. We're always accountable. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> How's it looking, King Zone? You're, you're making progress. Well, the I'm only two winners away. Progress. The A team, the pride of the joint, up $500 and RI is really lagging behind. But I'm very confident this weekend I'm going to do some pretty aggressive staking and really blast my way out. What do you mean you're doing aggressive Gamble staking? Gamble responsibly. Gamble responsibly. Oh, I'm just going to like, for example, Storm Boy, that might be a three-unit play. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm well, gonna... don't forget Manal down the bottom. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'll work it out. I'll work mm. it out. You just worry about your stuff, mate. Mm. So... Um, <laughs> Um, it's been a marathon, but we're getting there. Dogs in the den. We're getting close to Golden Easter Egg time. Jake, Jason Campbell does a fantastic job. It's a really, really he good does. show. Go and watch it. He's been tipping a lot of winners. I think he's tipping at 12% SP on Fantastic. Dogs. He's been huge. tipping more than we have, that's for sure. Yeah. Or I have, I should say. I can't speak for anyone else. Um, we were at the yearling sales yesterday. We're doing some content with the Labrokes Racing Club. We're going to take okay. you inside the yearling sales on Day one and day two, which is next Sunday and Monday. It's going to be really good content if that's what you like. I'm putting a lot of effort into it. Um, that'll drop next week. It's a bit like our Saturday sessions on the racing. We're kind of doing that about the sales session. I really like doing it, as do the boys who are out there with me. Got great access, which we've been really lucky with lately. Quick question, the Winx filly. The most ever paid for a horse was the um, full brother or half brother to Black Caviar. I can't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. I think it was half brother. I think it was Redoute's choice out of – Something uh, what hell singe. What do you think right. of Winks Philly? It's Piero out What's of What's the record Winx. so far? Piero had a Winks. Million, oh, really? yeah, five million. Oh, really? Five million. That was for be more than Redoute's that. Choice half brother to Black Caviar. That was five million. Never, that, never that, made the race. That was track. the spider bite horse. That's right. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill Vlahos. Well, the rich get now. richer at the moment, so I'm going to say uh, seven and a half million. Whoa! <laughs> so is, it a, is it a cold rich Philly? It's a Philly. Oh, it's a Philly. Mm. Two and a half. Boo. Dream team. Uh, two six, yeah, two. Six. Nah, it's going, it's going five million for sure. Okay, um, seven and a half. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. You, you've you've had the. What's uh, it like on type? I yeah, you've seen know. the type. But we're, we're just well, we, like, yeah, we, yeah. We, we got a fantastic tour of the Coolmore part, the Coolmore stable at the sales yesterday. I had a great chat with a bloke called John Kennedy. 
took spent probably five minutes with us showing us um, the Winx filly, and that's the kind of insight you're going to get. How'd she look? Oh, she's beautiful, but how would I mean, how would I know? They all look the same to me. So undefeated yeah. so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you can see these hats we're wearing. If you like them, they're going to be in our merch store very, very soon. They are good hats. They're yeah, good. Some awesome. of our best stuff, I reckon. Mm. But even better than that, if you come to our punt party, you get one for free. If you go on Whoa. Oprah, if you go on the Oprah Whoa. show, you get a car. <laughs> Two, three. But with us, you get a free hat. It looks good on the king. It looks good on me. Go support our merch store, wolfdenstore.win. I think we're there. I think we've done it. It's been a marathon, but I've loved it. Yep. So. Won't be half an hour. I'll be way bigger than half an hour. Yeah. What, what are we at, Troll Mid? 47. 47 minutes. Yeah. Outstanding. RI's done it good again. Good work. Huge day. <laughs> Looking good. forward to meeting a lot of people from the Den at the Punt Party Let's on Saturday. It. I think there's a tiny bit of room to squeeze in if you still want to come. The rain's not looking good, so come and join us at the Hudson Hotel in Seven Hills in Sydney. It's going to be... One of the best punt parties ever. One of the best fun. days on the punt. Yep. Oh, I love it's it. It's going to happen. Even if Randwick's wet, there'll be 10 other meetings ready to go. And yes. Just... Have you Eastern Suburbs boys ever been out as far west as Seven Hills? Or? We, yeah, we I'm have. There's a, I love it out there. There's a bit of whinging from the young blokes over there <laughs> yeah. that they've got to go that we far. We have to meet at Sydney Airport at 6 a.m. or something. Like. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's where the real people in Sydney live out there. So I um, can't wait to hang out with you all. Up the den, bring on Saturday. Let's go.